Hello everybody, I would like to make an overview of uh, several divisions of the embryonic gastrointestinal tube and its derivatives. So if this is the head of the embryo, we got an invagination called stomodium, then we got a series of pharyngeal arches, the first largest one, second, third, fourth, then the cardiac bulge, then the hepatic bulge, then the umbilicus, and here will be the dorsum, and the caudal region, And uh, that was the ectoderm, that was the surface ectoderm. I will use purple for the endoderm, starting with the pharynx and its pharyngeal pouches. Then posterior to the pharynx, we got a ventral evagination of the endoderm, that will be the uh, future lung or trachea, so it's the called lung butt. Then we got the embryonic esophagus, a dilation of the embryonic stomach, then the first part of the duodenum, and here we have uh, three uh, more butts, the liver butt, the, the primordial of liver, then the ventral pancreatic butt. On the opposite side, we got the dorsal pancreatic butt and the rest of the duodenum. Then the next uh, division of the GIT tube forms kind of a loop, intestinal loop. It goes into the umbilicus. It's connected with the remnants of the yolk sac. Then the, the other limb goes back to the body cavity. And here we gradually come to the posterior part of the gut. The terminal uh, division is the cloaca, the common part of the GIT and uh, urinary and genital systems. Then we got a blindly ending projection called allantois that uh, goes towards the umbilicus. And here is the posterior division of the gastrointestinal tube. Now each part of the tube has some dominant artery, which are, bran these arteries are branches of the dorsal aorta. So the region of the foregut is uh, primarily supplied by the celiac trunk, while the second division, the midgut, is predominantly supplied by the superior mesenteric artery, which actually forms an axis of this intestinal loop and its future rotation. While the hind gut is preferentially supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery. The gut tube hangs on uh, mesenteries. It's the dorsal mesentery which is present in whole extent here and it connects the gut tube to the posterior body wall and it's also a small, much smaller and only temporary ventral mesentery in the region of the stomach and the hepatic and pancreatic uh, butts, dorsal mesentery. 
So let's label the scheme. We got the st ectodermal stomodium. which is temporarily separated from the pharynx via the oropharyngeal membrane. That will per be perforated. Okay, then we got the pharynx Line with the endoderm, the pharyngeal arches, the first, second, third, fourth, that are visible here. Pharyngeal arches. Uh, then it's the lung, but primordium of the trachea and lungs, <coughs> the esophagus, the stomach, and the liver butt, the liver butt also known as the hepatic diverticle. That's the same. Actually, it forms the border between uh, the foregut and the midgut. So what is cranially from the liver butt, it's the foregut, the foremost part of the gastrointestinal tube. What is posteriorly, it's midgut. Then we got the uh, ventral pancreatic butt and on the opposite there is the dorsal pancreatic butt so obviously pancreas will originate from uh, these two butts that will meet and merge Then there is the uh, intestinal loop. Inside the umbilicus, uh, sorry, umbilical cord. The intestinal loop is connected to the remnants of the yolk sac, yolk vesicle. And the connecting part, it's called the vitellin duct. Or omphaloenteric duct. Omphaloenteric duct. And there's uh, the allantois, uh, which is um, blindly ending rudimentary fetal membrane. Uh, that is r really rudimentary in mammals and it goes towards the uh, umbilical cord where it could be even found in the proximal umbilical cord and we got the cloaca the common part of the terminal segment of the GIT and uh, together with the urinary and genital systems where also the ectoderm and endoderm is temporally next to each other, forming the cloacal membrane. But it also breaks up later on. So, um, and this is the region of the hind gut. There's a third, a third uh, division of the two, foregut, midgut, and the third is the hindgut. Let's label the arteries, that's the dorsal aorta, and the celiac trunk, and 
being the dominating artery for the foregut. The superior mesenteric artery do, um, supplying the midgut and the inferior mesenteric artery supplying the hindgut. The division between the midgut or the borders between the midgut and hindgut are more or less also vascular and uh, you know that the anastomosis between these two arteries occur on the two-thirds of the transverse colon. So that's where the midgut hindgut border can be found. The presence of this intestinal loop inside the umbilicus is also called physiological umbilical herniation. Which occurs between week 6 to 10. So it's perfectly normal in in this time to have part of the intestinal loops outside the body, but they will need to return back, to be pulled back before the region of the umbilicals really will be closed. Otherwise they will be trapped outside. So they need to get back into the body before uh, the, the, the week 10. Let me also label the uh, dorsal mesentery I should say perhaps dorsal mesenteries because uh, they could be named according to the various parts of the GIT like mesogast dorsal mesogastrium uh, mesentery in the in the proper sense of the word mesocolon etc and there is a small ventral mesentery here. In a much smaller extent. In next schemes we will go through the various parts of the or divisions of the gastrointestinal tube.